Okay, here we're going to look at the evolution of circulatory systems. We're going to go from a very basic here with basically like a flatworm to a very complex system like our own. Now, one of the first evolutionary steps here was the development of a gastrovascular cavity. Nidarians and flatworms have a cavity that both function for digestion as well as circulation. So while they do have a circulatory system, they also kind of overlap here with the digestive system. So this is why these are considered our most primitive of organisms. Building from that, we then have organisms like this that have developed what we call an open circulatory system. Now what this entails is there is no distinction between circulating fluid, such as blood, and fluid of body tissues, which is lymph. Uh, hemolymph is what it's specifically referred to as. So there's kind of this mixture here. In these open circulatory systems, of such as our mollusk here, for example, of the snail, and arthropods is our bee below, uh, these open circulatory systems, the fluid called hemolymph, is pumped through blood vessels that empties into the body cavity. The hemolymph returns to blood vessels through openings. Now, what makes this so primitive, we may think, oh, it's just pumping blood and lymph around. Well, it's just kind of going into a category. There's not really like a very controlled or specific system that's being pumped through. See here, we have multiple hearts. We're having this kind of mix, mixtures here. Austria here are the openings, and you can see that there's many of them. There's not just one. And this is why it's kind of open, because blood could flow to here, to here, to come around here. It's not very organized. Closed circulatory systems, such as annelids and vertebrates, they have circulating fluid blood. It's always enclosed within vessels. That's the definition, or that's what makes it closed. This transports blood away from and back to a pump, in this case being the heart. We have our example here of our earthworm. These closed circulatory systems, again, pictured in both of these images here, the heart pumps blood through vesicles that separate from the interstitial fluid of the body. So it's not only organized with the vessels, but there's also a separation. Most vertebrates and some invertebrates, such as the inlid earthworm, as I pictured here, have a, a closed circulatory system. Now what these kind of blood vessels look like, in a more detailed sense, such as birds, birds and mammals, they have a heart, which is the pump, blood vessels, which are the networks of tubes, and blood is the actual circulating fluid. Now specifically, we refer to um, these vesicles that we have, some as arteries, Arteries carry blood away, A, away from the heart. Veins return blood to the heart. And capillaries connect these two. This is areas where we're having exchange of nutrients and or oxygen and carbon dioxide. Blood plasma passes through the capillaries. Pressure forces the fluid out of the capillary walls. Some of this interstitial fluid returns back to the capillaries. And some lymph vessels are returned to the venous blood in specific sites. So you kind of have this distinction between um, the lymph system and our exact circulatory system, even though both do kind of work in cohort with one another. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of the timeline and the different complexities related to circulatory systems.